We'll get back to section uh, 4.1 and 4.2 here. I'm combining these two sections together. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so we're on this example here next. We want to find C and A for the function f of x equals C times A to the x if f of 0 is 6 and f of 1 is 3. Okay. So f of 0 means that if I replace x with 0, I have c times a to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is always 1, right? That's uh, one of my uh, laws of exponents there. So I'm going to have c times 1 is c. And now f of 0 is 6. So in a way, they're telling me that c is 6 with that. Okay, so, so far I've got the function f of x equals 6 times a to the x. <clears throat> uh, also, f of 1 is 3. Okay, so f of 1 means that if I replace x with 1, I have 6 times a to the first, so that would be just 6a. And f of 1 is 3. Okay, so 3 equals 6a means that if I divide both sides by 6, a is 1 half. So the function that we're talking about here is f of x equals 6 times 1 half to the x. Okay, now in the last video we graphed the function g of x equals 1 half to the x. If I have the function 6 times 1 half to the x, I think transformations on this, so that would be a vertical stretch of 1 half to the x. I'm stretching it out by a factor of 6 or in other words, I'm just going to multiply all the y values on the graph of g of x here by 6 Okay, to, to get the new graph there. Um, <clears throat> let's try uh, another problem. This would be a, a, kind of a similar problem here. They want us to find a formula for an exponential function passing through the points 1, 2, and 3, 4. Okay, so um, 1, 2 means that f of 1 is 2, and 3, 4 means that f of 3 is, is 4. Okay, now I want us to find an exponential function, so we need a function in the form f of x equals c times a to the x. Well, f of 1 means that x is 1, so I got c times a to the first power, that's just c times a, equals 2. And uh, f of 3 equals 4 means that uh, I'm replacing x with 3 and c times a to the x. So uh, c times uh, a cubed would be 4. Now using the top equation here, 2 equals c times a. If I divide both sides by a, c is 2 over a. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace c, and with 2 over a, into this equation, so I can find a. So I'm going to have 4 equals 2 over a times uh, a cubed. <clears throat> a cubed divided by a, that's a squared. Okay, and then divide by 2, so a squared would be 2. a, therefore, would be plus or minus root 2. Now, a is the base of the exponential, the base can't be a negative. Okay, so a looks like it's me root 2, and uh, knowing that a is root 2 means that c would be 2 over root 2, and I'm going to go ahead and rationalize the denominator on this. So rationalizing the denominator just means get rid of the radical that we currently see in the denominator. Um, so to make that happen, let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom of this by root 2. Root 2 over root 2 is 1, so I'm not changing anything if I'm to multiply by, by 1, you know. Um, I have uh, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and up top I have uh, 2 root 2. So the 2's cancel, leaving me with root 2 for C. Okay, so A is root 2. Also, c is root 2. So I have the function 
c times a to the x, that'd be root 2 times root 2 to the x. Okay, and uh, go ahead and circle that function. That'd be the formula that we need there. <clears throat> All right, now the next thing that we're going to have to know is we're going to have to be familiar with the letter e. Um, the, the number e is uh, used to represent an irrational number with a <clears throat> decimal approximation. E is approximately... 2.7183, okay, it, it, it goes on forever, okay. What is an irrational number? Well, an irrational number is one that cannot be written as a fraction. So like pi is an irrational number. Um, there's no way you can write pi as a fraction. The square root of 2, that would also be an irrational number. There's no way to write the square root of 2 as a fraction, okay. Um, <clears throat> why do we have the number e? Well, we're going to see later how it relates to what's called the natural logarithm. e is the base of what's called the natural logarithm. Uh, the number e is used in several areas of math. Okay, so for example, statistics, um, compound interest. When I look at uh, you know, how much interest I have over, over time, like from investing money. So that, uh, <clears throat> that can involve the number E in it. Population growth and decay models. So if I'm studying how a population is growing over time or getting smaller over time, that will usually involve the number E. Calculus is all over the place in calculus. Okay. E, in, in my opinion, is arguably, you know, more important than the number pi, just because of how often we see this number come up in various formulas, okay? Uh, and just a general fact says that the most common exponential function is f of x equals e to the x, okay? That's the exponential function, meaning that, uh, you know, uh, there's going to be many more times where you're going to have base e as opposed to any other base, Okay, so like, you know, there's significantly more math problems out there where um, I'm going to be working with e to the x as opposed to like 2 to the x or 5 to the x or 1 half to the x. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph f of x equals e to the x next. Um, now, most calculators have an e button on them. Uh, this is finding it. Is the, is the thing. Okay, so on this calculator, if I hit second and then the ln function, that brings me to e to, you know, and then I just enter in the power. Okay, or on some other calculators, you, you have to get to like second and then the division sign. Okay, um, and uh, so I guess play around with your model calculator and check that you can get the number e on there. If if uh, if the calculator does not have the number e, that'd be kind of strange. Even the even the super five you know super cheap five dollar calculators at Walmart have have an e button on them somewhere. It's just locating it. Uh, but if if you can't find the number e, um, go ahead and just use the decimal approximation for that number. So right there, e is approximately two point seven one eight three. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and graph e to the x, okay? And uh, we use a table of numbers. I can let x be anything I want here when I'm graphing this. So like if I let x be negative 2, um, e to the negative second power is about 0.14 is what I'm getting there. Okay, so that'd be the y value. So, uh, the point uh, negative 2.14, that point would be on this curve, okay? Uh, what if I let x be negative 1? Next. So um, e to the negative first power is uh, 0.37 is what I'm getting, okay? So negative 1.37, that's going to be a little bit higher than the previous point there. Go ahead and plot that point. 
if x is zero, anything to the zero power is always one. So this curve, just like any other basic exponential, is always gonna pass through the y-axis at zero, one. Okay? If x is one, I just have the number e, and uh, as I said, e is approximately uh, 2.72, if I run to two digits there, okay? So here's the point um, one e. And then I'll just take one more number. If, if x is two, um, and we plug that in the calculator, uh, let's see, e squared is uh, about 7.4. Okay, about 7.39, I guess I said. Um, so that point is off the scale that I've got here, but um, you know, uh, but so go ahead and draw in the the curve. We're just gonna be passing along uh, these points, and, um, and no matter what x is, x can be anything, positive, negative, or zero. You're never gonna have zero come out of this, and you're never gonna have a negative come out of this. Okay, so what that means to us is that as the curve heads outward to the left, it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis, or to y equals zero, but it's never gonna get there, right? Because um, I'm never gonna have zero come out of this. So I'm gonna have an asymptote on the graph. Uh, an exponential function always has an asymptote on the graph, okay? There's always a horizontal asymptote on the graph. Uh, now, I guess that uh, I could have already kind of known what this graph looked like. Okay, why, why would I say that? Well, um, we in the last video we graphed the curve y equals two to the x, and so there's that curve there, right? Um, now e is really close to two. Okay, so I I should expect to get a graph that is very similar to uh, what I got here. And that's exactly what happened, okay? Um, and uh, you know, just like any other basic uh, function, you can apply what you know about transformations to build infinitely many more functions. So if I wanted to graph uh, you know, h of x equals e to the negative x minus one, I'm gonna take the graph of y equals e to the x, and now I'm replacing x with a negative x, so that means that I'm gonna to have to flip this graph about the y-axis, and then the minus one means I'm gonna to have to shift it down one unit. Okay, so all the points are gonna move. Um, well, let's see, so, uh, if I um, go ahead and check this out. Um, so I'm gonna flip the graph about the y-axis and then shift it down one unit. Okay, um, so here's like zero, one is on the graph. When I flip that about the y-axis, that's not gonna change anything, but then shift it down one unit and that point is gonna be at the origin. Okay, so the point that was at zero, one is now gonna be at zero, zero. Um, here's, uh, here's the point um, one E on the graph. So if I rotate that about the X, about the Y axis, that'll put me at uh, negative one E. And if I shift that down one unit, that'll bring me to the point negative one E minus one. Now E is about 2.72, right? So minus one, that'd be about 1.72. So uh, negative one, 1.72, that point would be on the graph. Okay? Um, all the points are gonna move, like I said, and um, that includes the asymptote also, okay? Flipping this graph about the y-axis isn't gonna change anything with the horizontal asymptote, but then we're gonna shift it down one unit. So ultimately, I'm gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one when I draw this. Okay, so this will be a, you know, a, a rough sketch of uh, the graph of uh, h of x. And of course, I can build you know, many more functions 
um, with, with, the, with this, just knowing what I know about transformations, okay? Um, all right, we'll go ahead and stop the video right there. And uh, in the next video, uh, I'm gonna talk about solving exponential equations. And then um, we'll also look at uh, some, some story problems here, okay?